So we've been asked to generate a graph plotting the volume of silver nitrate versus the mass of the precipitate formed. And we've also been asked to do two different trend lines and finding out where those lines intersect. We've done that by hand already, but now we have to do it using a Google Sheet. So I've taken this data from the pre-lab and I've already pasted it into a Google Sheet. So here are our seven experiments. Here's our volume of silver nitrate. They give us the volume of the potassium chromate, but we won't be using that for our graphs. And here's the mass of our precipitate. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually just going to delete the volume of the potassium chromate because I don't need that for my graphing. What I can do now is I can generate just a real quick scatter plot. If I highlight the data that I'm using, I don't care about the experiment numbers. So the left-hand column that I've highlighted, the volume of silver nitrate, this will be my x-axis, and the mass of precipitate will be my y-axis, which makes sense because the volume is the independent variable, the mass was our dependent variable. If I go over to create a chart, or insert a chart, what I'm going to choose for a chart type is I'm going to get a scatter plot. What you'll see quickly, just like you did by hand, is you'll have an increasing line of dots here and a decreasing line of dots here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my vertical axis a little bit, and I'm going to increase that maximum value it's going from 0 to 10. Let's make it um, 0 to 15. That way you can see the points a little bit more clearly. Now you can see those two lines a little bit more clearly. And you can see that if I have a line going increasing from the left and a line increasing from the right, they will intersect at some point. How do we graph those two trend lines, however? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my data and I'm going to choose the data points of the increasing trend line and of the decreasing trend line. So if you look, these four data points here are the increasing trend lines. And so that is experiments one through four. And these three down here are the decreasing. And so those are experiments five through seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out my precipitate data. I'm going to keep a mass of precipitate increasing. And then I'm going to create another column, mass of precipitate, and I'm just going to call that decreasing. And I'm going to take these three data points of the decreasing, and I'm simply just going to move them over to their own column. Now what happens if I generate a graph with these separate columns, the chart will still keep the volume of silver nitrate as my x-axis, but will generate two different trends, one for the increasing column and one for the decreasing column, which means I can then do a trend line for each. You can notice here on the graph, it already got rid of the decreasing columns because I only asked it to plot the um, column, the original column, and because I've moved those data points, they've moved away from here. So I can go ahead and delete this graph and just start from scratch. So I'm going to, same thing we did before, I'm going to make a scatter plot. And here you can see you have two different graphs, one of the increasing in blue and one of the decreasing in red. Let's do some customization here. First thing, why don't we change the title? We could say mass of precipitate versus volume of sulfur nitrate. And then what I wanted to do, like before, is let's change our vertical axis and let's go from 0 to 15. That way we can see our data points a little bit more clearly. So there's the increasing, there's the decreasing. If I go back to the series selection, what I can do is I can add a trend line. But what I want to do is I don't want to apply it to all series. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to do a trend line just for the blue series, the mass of the precipitate increasing. And then if I generate a trend line, the default is linear, which is what I want. For a label, I'm going to want to use the equation. And I can also show an R squared value just to see how good the data is. And you can see here is I've got a nice trend line for those increasing values in that blue series. And I can now go back to the same thing. So I'm in the series section of the chart editor, and then I want to apply a trend line to the other series, the mass of the precipitate decreasing. So I'm going to insert a trend line. For my label, I'm going to use an equation, and I can also show the R squared value. And here you can see my two trend lines, and you can see where they intersect which should look very similar to what you did by hand. Now the powerful part of this is I actually have equations for the line. So I've got y equals 0.332x plus 0.034. That's my increasing. And then for the decreasing, I've got y equals negative 0.66x plus 33. So let's do a little bit of math. So you could plug these equations into a calculator. I'm just going to use Wolfram Alpha. And I'm going to set my first equation, y equals 0.332 times x plus 0.034. That's one equation. I'm going to separate with a comma, and I'm going to do another equation, y equals negative 0.0. 6, 6 times x plus 33. And what Wolfram Alpha will do is it will graph those two. Here's the graph similar to what we've seen. And then it will find where they intersect. And you can see a solution of x equals 33.2, y equals 11. Now remember the x value was our volume of silver nitrate. So our silver nitrate would have a volume of 33.2 where those lines intersect, which means that potassium chromate is going to have a value of 16.8. So it's roughly a 2 to 1 ratio between the silver nitrate and the potassium chromate.